Well, greetings, YouTubers. Uh, for those of you who followed my recent series on building uh, the Art Deco amp that you see before you, uh, some viewers uh, commented that I should build uh, some sort of speaker cabinet to go with it. So in today's video, we're going to do that. I considered all sorts of exotic designs that would take literally months of effort and then I thought, oh heck no, uh, why don't we do something a little more practical and that is use two existing old vintage uh, speaker cabinets and merge them together in some way that it will produce a really good looking cabinet that is compatible with the Art Deco amp. And then after constructing the cabinet, uh, let's modify it in an attempt to get the best possible tone and non-directionality we can from it. So we really have a double video today, a construction project, and then an experiment in speaker cabinet uh, tone characteristics. If this sounds interesting, then hang on because we're just about to get started. Before we get started, however, I wanted to show you a little upgrade here on the cabinet of the amplifier. Uh, many viewers said you better label those outputs and inputs or some problems might happen and they're right. So I went ahead and made little aluminum plaques that are brushed to match the rest of alum the aluminum on the cabinet and labeled them and installed them. So I hope you like it. Okay, let's take a look at the two speaker cabinets that I think can be merged into one real nice one. First off is the ancient Ampro cabinet which has no back door it's pretty well gutted and it's in overall hideous shape but it has one heck of a snazzy Art Deco speaker grill on the other hand the Bell and Howell speaker cabinet is in beautiful shape but it has sort of a boring speaker grill uh, and also it has this really nice compartment back here that when you open it you see that their speaker is completely enclosed and there is a compartment up here for, could be for power cords or uh, guitar uh, cables, things like that. So the, this one is structurally just about perfect, but cosmetically rather boring, whereas this, I think, has the look that we need for the little Art Deco lamp. First, we need to take the old Ampro cabinet into the workshop and then remove all of these lock nuts from the studs and remove the uh, speaker grill and screen. Okay, it looks like we have removed about the only good parts left on the old Ampro cabinet. Uh, so I guess it can be sent on its merry way and then we are going to use the speaker grill and screen uh, to create a proper cabinet for our Art Deco Blue uh, amplifier. Now it's time to remove this rear panel from the Bell & Howell uh, cabinet so that we can see what type of speaker there is inside. Notice we have the two input jacks here, but they're not quarter inch. Okay, they're smaller, so uh, probably like 3 sixteenths or so, so they will have to be replaced. Up here on top we have a nice big coil of speaker wire with those little uh, 3 sixteenths jacks at either end. And uh, we look into the compartment where that coil was stored, and we see that the speaker uh, chamber is not sealed but is uh, vented up here at the top and sort of like a port and I guess uh, then would vent outward uh, at the rear like this and I think this may be an excellent design for guitar use uh, of course we'll only know uh, by trial and error okay all the screws are removed and the nuts are removed from the input jacks uh, I notice here that the speaker impedance is 8 ohms, which is nice. So let's lift this panel out of the way. And we see that we have 575 is a Hepner speaker. Okay, they were used in uh, like organs and uh, other musical instrument uh, applications. This is an Alnico speaker and a good size one. Uh, it has the rib cone, which I think was generally associated with bass tones. Uh, this is supposed to be better as a low frequency speaker and the smooth 
cone was supposed to be better for high frequency. So this may be just a wonderful guitar speaker. Of course, we'll have to find that out for ourselves. Okay, I've lifted the speaker out, and what a nice grill was left here. Um, and this is that aluminum uh, trim ring that's probably held in by the four uh, speaker studs. Okay, now let's look at this speaker. Uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a nicer vintage 12 inch Alnico speaker. Good stiff suspension, really nice dust cover. I think this might end up being an excellent guitar speaker. Well, let's hope anyway. Well, it turns out that those studs really weren't holding the ring in. It was simply glued in. So uh, what I'll have to do then is use a putty knife to scrape away all the glue from the front of the cabinet. Then uh, these four uh, screws plus several more can be used to hold that Ampro ring onto the front of the Bell & Howell cabinet. Okay, I've scraped away most of that glue uh, to level the face of the cabinet and I used an exacto knife to lift off the Bell and Howell sticker. Now we'll try the Ampro grill in here and already I think it looks pretty slick. There I did a little more cleanup of the uh, face of the cabinet and I removed the studs which are really unique. They have a reversed thread part here that goes in backwards. You uh, put it in backwards and uh, then when you run the lock nuts back here to hold the speaker on, you actually tighten this rather than loosen it. Very clever. Now with the original Ampro grill screws in place where the four holes are in the cabinet, I'll use them to position the grill so that I can drill the additional four holes for four more of those grill screws. And now, held in with all eight of its original screws, is the Ampro uh, alum cast aluminum grill and screen. Okay, next I think I'm going to have to uh, clean this up and polish it and rework it to make it look. I removed the handle from the top and then spray painted the cabinet to match the blue of the Art Deco amp. Because the cabinet had a pebble grain uh, finish already applied to it, I really can't go back and polish this so it's always going to be a slightly different finish but at least it's the same color. Next I'm going to do some pinstriping on the side uh, to give it kind of an old look uh, like those early Gibson amps that had that pinstriping uh, in the tweed and I'm going to have it uh, where it uh, matches up with the design on the front and then wraps around the side. That sound you hear in the background is a rare event out here in the desert. An absolute pouring rainstorm. That's the 1941 International, all bundled up nice and cozy. Now because this cabinet is trapezoidal, which means it's slanting in here instead of uh, the sides being parallel, um, I can't use aluminum strips on the side, so I'm going to uh, mask and use pinstripe tape and then paint a uh, what I think is a nice old uh, type Art Deco pattern here on the side of the cabinet that comes up here and sort of matches the design of the grill. Okay now that I'm outside somewhat sheltered from the rain I'm going to dust on several coats of gold lacquer uh, on all the exposed areas here of the there we go, and uh, now I'm going to let it dry, which shouldn't take long, and uh, I'll remove the tape. Okay, uh, we'll pull it off, and you see we leave a really nice kind of old-fashioned striped pattern on the cabinet. I'll have to uh, apply a light coat of clear lacquer over this just to preserve it, but uh, then we'll be ready to put in that grill and see how it all looks. Here's a view of the cabinet upright. Well here's a quick view of the cabinet with the Ampro grill installed and the stripes that lead into this middle section here of the grill. 
Next, I'll have to uh, paint the hardware for the handle gold to match everything else and install it. Well, the Hepner 12-inch uh, Alnico speaker is installed in the uh, speaker cabinet. I used all eight of the Ampro screws with nylon lock nuts, so I think it's in there to stay. I also soldered up the quarter-inch input jack, which will be installed now in that uh, rear baffle. Okay, the rear baffle here is installed, and uh, there is the input jack for the speaker. I know what you're thinking, not a very big enclosure for a 12-inch speaker, but uh, and it may sound real boxy. Uh, I guess we'll just have to see. Here is the finished cabinet. Uh, remember we started out with our Bell & Howell, a kind of a gray, boring speaker cabinet with that uh, silvery grill, and now I've transplanted an ancient Ampro speaker grill, uh, tied it in with pinstripes, and uh, painted the hardware for the handle to match. And all that remains now is to see how it sounds. Uh, it is a small cabinet. Uh, there's not much resonance room in there for a 12-inch speaker. But uh, it has that uh, kind of a port up at the top. And it was designed by Bell & Howell. So who knows, maybe it's just good for mid-range. But uh, now that we've created an attractive speaker cabinet uh, for the Art Deco amp, uh, let's try an experiment in which we optimize the cabinet to produce the best tone possible from this speaker. Now granted, this is a fairly small uh, cabinet for a 12-inch speaker. And about the only variations that we can make will be in the amount of back that's on the cabinet. As it stands, the rear is almost completely sealed. So here's what I'm advocating. Why don't I strum a few chords with the uh, cabinet in its current uh, condition with the back sealed and then have a comparison by strumming a few chords with various amounts of the back removed. In other words, uh, we'll start off with the back completely sealed. Then uh, I'm going to take the back off completely. We'll see how that sounds. Then I'll put back one half of the back panel and finally I'll make two panels, one at the top and one at the bottom, which will cover about two-thirds of the rear with paneling and then leave about one-third open. And to measure the directionality of the speaker, we can run the experiment in two different ways. Number one, the camera and microphones will be directly in front of the speaker and five feet away. In part two, the camera will be at a 45 degree angle to the speaker and five feet away. In my mind, the optimum characteristics of a speaker cabinet like this uh, would be the best possible tone, and by that I mean clarity balanced with good bass response, and also not purely directional. I want the music to be widespread so that no matter where you're standing or sitting, uh, you will get to hear a uh, tone that is very pleasant and balanced. Now I've never seen or heard of such an experiment as this before, but I really think it'll be interesting to see what type of small speaker enclosure works best for guitar use. So if that sounds interesting, let's get started. As you can see, I'm using the Art Deco amp and I'm at slightly below 2 uh, on the volume control. This is the cabinet in the full back position where the back uh, extends all the way up actually almost to the rim of the speaker and uh, the speaker itself is almost completely enclosed. Okay, let's start off playing a few chords at the 15 out of 100 volume setting. Let's repeat that first test, but at a 45 degree angle to the uh, front of the cabinet. I'm not 
sure if it was as apparent to you at home as it is here, but the sound, the tone has changed completely. Uh, now, when you're not in the direct line of the speaker projection, uh, it's rather boomy, uh, kind of an empty, um, sort of boxy sound without much clarity. Uh, not a pleasant sound at all. While doing my research for this video, I read that completely sealed cabinets, like this one virtually is, uh, will tend to project straight forward uh, rather well but that when you're not uh, directly in front of the speaker that the sound quality diminishes a great deal. It gets sort of empty and hollow and boxy and boomy just exactly like we just heard. And this is the cabinet with no back in place. half of the back. This way the speaker can radiate out the back and bounce off walls behind it as well as project forward. So this should give less directionality but still have some resonance here for bass frequencies. We'll see. Okay, now this is the one I have a feeling is going to work the best because this is the way that most uh, amplifier cabinets are built. They have a panel on top and a panel on the bottom. And what I'm calling this is, very imaginatively, the split two-thirds back. It's about one-third above, one-third below, so that's two-thirds of it has backing. And then the remaining one-third is going to be wide open. I haven't finished all the cut edges or where the uh, wood dough is filling holes because I'm not absolutely sure that this is the way it's going to end up. Okay, there's no need finishing it if it's not going to stay this way. Okay, here we go with the split two-thirds back. <laughs> to say that as expected the split two-thirds back uh, sounded the best to me. It had the best combination of bass resonance and non-directionality that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up uh, the woodwork on the back of the cabinet and then we'll see
Now it's time for a very brief final sound check with the finished two-thirds back in place. That's about it uh, for this video in which we constructed a speaker cabinet for the Art Deco amp and then modified it uh, to uh, produce the best possible tone. For those of you who may disagree with my choice of the two panel backing for the cabinet, uh, understand that my decisions were made on uh, what I heard here live rather than over the video. Okay, and uh, also it's purely subjective, uh, and you may be right and I may be wrong, but all that really matters is, is the method that I used, which you can use to optimize your own speaker cabinets at home. In the spirit of full disclosure, I must admit I'm not real thrilled with the performance of the Hepner speaker. Uh, when pushed hard, it farts like a rented mule, and it's really not acceptable. Uh, it's why I abbreviated the audio demonstration in this video and why I have ordered a much higher quality replacement speaker. Uh, when it gets here I'll install it and in a future video we'll see how it sounds. I would like to express my gratitude for the continuing support from my uh, Patreon patrons and uh, PayPal contributors. One, we've made it another month here advertising free and it's all because of you guys. The raffle for the stage right amp has not yet been completed, uh, probably by my next video, and I'll have the winner's name for you then. Well, enough blathering, let's head over to a recent car show and see how many hot rods and distractions we can find. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again. How about this for a beautiful 65 Stingray? Gorgeous condition. Mint interior, it's a automatic. Must have been a girl's car at one time, 327-300, the one of the base engine. Beautifully done. Looks like just like it did when it was new, even the knockoff wheels which may or may not be original, but who cares, they're beautiful. Boy, now here's a gem. Talk about red, huh? Wow. Let's take a look in here. Oh yeah. Nice engine. Look how far it's set back. Remember on my uh, Model A truck, my 28, I had to darn near have the distributor in my lap because uh, the engines are too long for this tiny little engine compartment. Okay. Absolutely gorgeous. Damn, nice interior too. I'd probably go with a black interior with a red car, but what do I know? Let's get back here and take a look. Huh. Stainless steel gas tank. In 1931 New Mexico plates. I don't remember Model A's ever having a gas tank like that. It was always up in the cowl. So this is more like a 32. Still very nicely done. Okay, I've got to include a distraction. Looks like a pretty good one to me. A bunch of you were interested in the engine in this uh, Volkswagen. So I talked with the owner and he's about to show it to us.
absolutely gorgeous. I don't know enough about Volkswagens. Uh, what type of engine is this? It's a 1500, right? Yeah. 1500 with double carburetor. All right. Tank carburetor, pancake, right? Is this the type of engine it came with, or is this? Uh, yes, this is the original. It engine. is, and probably uh, gets down the road pretty fast. It's very fun to drive. It's not that slow. Oh, okay. It's fun. It's Great. Yes, sir. Because people think Volkswagen, you know, but I, ones like this probably can probably change their attitudes. Yes. yes okay. Exactly. Well, thank you. How about this for an early 50s Chevy five window pickup? Interesting color. Gorgeous bed. Beautifully done. Gas filler. God, this isn't easy to do, I'll tell you. To get the body this perfect. I am not a huge fan of the wheels. We've discussed this before. Giant wheels uh, with O-ring tires. But that's kind of the modern way to do it. I don't agree with it at all. And I know a bunch of you agree with me on that. Take a look at the front end here. Unusual hood ornament. Very, very nice. I think I've featured this one before, but good lord, it deserves a second look. Just menacing as hell with that shop top. And I think it backs it up pretty well here with the engine, the zoomy headers. Lower on a small block. Chevy. Absolutely magnificent. Need your sunglasses when look at this thing. 33 or 4. I still have a hard time telling them apart when they're heavily modified like this. Jeez, what a car.